Hey friends, it's Akadiris, and today I wanted to address some things that have been talked about regarding earthquakes in Japan. If you guys didn't hear, last week Japan was struck with a 7.1 earthquake in the south. Joey and I actually didn't feel that. However, the following day after, an aftershock earthquake did hit a little higher up, which was in Kanagawa, and basically anyone in Kanagawa, Tokyo, Chiba, and Saitama definitely would have felt it. That was essentially the biggest aftershock that happened after the 7.1, and since then, the mega quake warning has been lifted. So we don't have to panic about that for now. So I saw a lot of people panicking over the mega quake warning. There were people that were canceling their flights to Japan. There were people not wanting to come out of their houses. And there were people spreading so much misinformation online. Like it was honestly just getting so frustrating. So first off, what is a mega quake? It's basically an earthquake from level eight and up, which is extremely catastrophic. And it's predicted that a mega quake is going to happen within 30 years and it will hit places like Tokyo and other major cities across Japan. It's expected that at least 2 million buildings will collapse and at least 200,000 people will be hurt or killed. It's a really terrifying thing to think about and I understand why a lot of people are worried about visiting Japan, let alone living in Japan. And the thing is, is that this theory has actually been talked about for a really long time. It's just that after the 7.1 meg uh, earthquake that happened last week, that a mega quake warning was finally issued. That was the first time that I think that really actually happened as far as as me living here for the past five and a half years, I had never actually seen a mega quake warning. The chances of a mega quake happening now are quite small, but they were just a little bit higher after that 7.1 earthquake because we haven't had an earthquake that big in a long time. So naturally, the meteorologists of Japan just basically kind of wanted to tell everyone, hey, there is a slight, like quoting slight, increased chance of a mega quake happening. And this is within the next 30 years. However, people were acting like this was gonna happen within the next 30 minutes. There was this one tweet that went so viral that it had to make headlines because this woman in Japan saw these weird looking clouds. Social media took it as earthquake clouds because these clouds formed after that 7.1 earthquake. Now again, I'm no meteorologist, but there's no way to determine an earthquake through clouds. If I saw a cloud connected to a natural disaster, I'd most likely put it towards like a tornado or a hurricane or a typhoon. Natural disasters that happen in the air that form with clouds. Earthquakes happen on earth not in the sky. And so I saw this like article, actually a lot of articles that were really like bashing on this tweet because of how stupid people were being, actually believing in earthquake clouds because it was like the dumbest shit ever. So it says here that the magnitude 7.1 quake led to the Japan Meteorological Agency issuing its first ever Nankai Trough Earthquake Bulletin. Rumors on social media include, quote, I heard that earthquake clouds appear before temblers. I'm afraid of omens. So then an actual meteorologist took to this and quoted, it's impossible to determine the effects of an earthquake by looking at clouds. Thank you. 39 year old expert Kentaro Araki from JMA's Meteorological Research Institute thing, yeah. Oh yeah, and he was also apparently the supervisor for the 2019 anime film Withering With You. I really like that film. I don't know how people thought that clouds could determine earthquakes, but I think what might have happened is maybe some people have seen this certain type of cloud, which is called a rotor cloud apparently. They seen this sort of cloud during or after an earthquake. So they just thought, oh, cloud, earthquake, they're connected. It was like the most like tinfoil hat conspiracy that I heard this week. It was really stupid. And you know what's even more stupid is I've been hearing this for years now, like before I was even like living in Japan, there were like some really stupid people that I would hear saying, oh, I saw on 4chan or 2chan that there's gonna be an earthquake that's gonna be like worse than the one that hit in 2011 next week because this happened. Like, why aren't people listening to the actual experts who dedicate their lives to this entire study. Why aren't people listening to the ones who actually have a degree in studying this and rather they would just take to Twitter and go to some nobody who was just, just as paranoid as they are. Why do we do this? Why is it because a tweet gets like 30,000 likes, we just like automatically say, oh, that's truth. That is that. I really feel bad for the people that are actually like staying up 
studying earthquakes and trying to like give the most accurate information to people only just to be debunked by paranoid people on 2chan. If you are so paranoid and you are panicking this much, it should be going towards preparation. There is absolutely no way to determine when exactly a mega quake is going to happen. There's like an 80% chance that it will happen and it will hit Tokyo and it will be very catastrophic. And it is a scary thought. There's no way of knowing where you're going to be during that earthquake if you're coming to Japan. Your biggest tool in this whole thing is preparation, which I feel like the majority of people who are putting their energy into things like earthquake clouds haven't even updated or even made their earthquake kit. If I took anything from that mega quake warning, it just reminded me to just recheck my earthquake bag that I've had for basically since I moved to Japan. It's always by the front door in a cabinet and I actually just like restocked it with fresh perishable foods, took away some stuff that I didn't need and put more important things in it. I actually made a mini emergency bag to take with me anywhere. It's about this big and it has a lot of really useful stuff in it because what happened during the aftershock in Kanagawa, I was actually in Shinjuku at a gay bar with my friend and I think we were just like throwing it back too hard to even feel the earthquake. But the thing is, is that my phone was actually almost dead too. So if an actual earthquake did happen in Shinjuku, I probably would have been in a lot of trouble. So that mega quake actually just helped me prepare more for the future. It didn't make me want to move out of Japan. It didn't make me want to leave my house. It just kind of like refreshed what I already knew and just reminded me, hey, like, remember this could happen. But there were so many people that I saw that were just like taking their paranoia like in the wrong direction. They were too busy like just doom scrolling on 2chan and TikTok and on Twitter and just looking at all of these like baseless claims when you could have been using the same amount of time by going to just the nearest Daiso and just getting a few basic things or maybe even just like securing things in your house and trying to figure out if an earthquake happens and I'm at home, where am I gonna duck? Where am I gonna hide? So with all of that said, the mega quake quake warning has been lifted, but the mega quake theory is still there. So I'm going to try and shift a lot of your guys' paranoia in the right direction by telling you guys of what to prepare for. And I'm also going to debunk a few myths that I've heard over the years about how to deal with earthquakes. So number one, when an earthquake happens, do you go under the door frame? The answer is actually no. This has been debunked so many times. The only reason that people believe this is because back then in certain areas of the world that actually got earthquakes, architecture was made made by material that was not stable and was easily crumbled with an earthquake. And the only thing that was still standing was the door frame. However, architecture since then has improved so much more that there are places in your house that would be better taking cover than under your door frame. The doorway is not stronger than the rest of the uh, rest of the building. Being under the ta table really can make a big difference. And so even in the worst earthquakes, getting that protected void so you can wait till you are rescued is most likely to happen under a sturdy table. Number two, should you leave your house during an earthquake? The answer is no, because it's going to be harder for you to navigate what's going to topple over you. You have things to worry about such as signs, walls, telephone poles, things coming off of the top of the building. Whereas in within your own house, when you're already familiar with it, you should already figure out where you wanna go run to, which is most likely going to be underneath a table or some kind of other sturdy piece of furniture that you have in the house. If you are outside during an earthquake, do not go up against a wall. A lot of people do this, but the thing is, is that these walls are not sturdy enough to withstand an earthquake and they can actually crumble. What you should do is actually stay where you are and just sit there and wait out until the earthquake is done. However, you should also make sure that you are as far away from the poles and telephone poles as much as possible and just sit there. And also make sure to use any bag or anything that you have around you to cover your head. Do not run into a building, especially if you're not familiar with it because you don't know what's in that building or if it can topple over you. Do not try to assist someone first before helping yourself. Find an open space, stay where you are, sit down and just hold on and wait out until the earthquake is done. If you're in a public building such as the mall, do not rush for the exit because a lot of people will be crowding there which will cause more injury. Stay where you are, maybe find a pillar and stay next to that and again, just hold on and wait until the earthquake is done. There are two apps I really recommend getting. One is Nerve. I have no idea who made this but they should have charged for this. It's a free app and it is the most detailed like Japan weather app that I've ever seen in my life. 
Second is safety tips. This is also really good. When an evacuation is issued to your area, it will actually be listed on safety tips apps. People's paranoia and panic should be going towards preparation, not the internet. So just stop. Like, that's basically what this video is. Just, please just stop. As far as how I feel about living in Japan with earthquakes, I'm honestly okay because I feel like whenever that earthquake does happen, I feel I have the right tools and the right preparation to deal with it when it happens. Living in fear is just not the way I want to live my life. So I don't really think that that's the way to go. I hope this helps you guys get some more clarification and help your guys' like paranoia in some way. Please do not listen to people that have absolutely like baseless information and, and look up how to make an earthquake backpack. That will be a lot more useful with your time. Appreciate you guys for watching. See you guys in the next video. Bye.